Gabbit Media. In this video series, we're looking at does the mass media affect the audience? In the last series, we were looking at influence, and this time we're looking at effect. In particular, we're looking at the effect of the mass media on violent behaviour. So the question is, does watching violence on the mass media affect our behaviour and make us violent? Well, I've just finished watching the film 300. Let's go break some stuff. This is Sparta! People have had concerns about whether the mass media makes us violent for a long time now. There's been a lot of research on the subject, particularly looking at television and video games. Researchers are particularly worried about the effects on children because they're supposedly more easily influenced because they're still learning. During the 1970s, a researcher Bandura came up with the idea of social learning theory. The research he conducted is known as Bandura's Bobo Doll Experiment. He suggested that children imitate what they see on television. He took two groups of children and showed one of the groups a video of a person being violent towards a Bobo Doll. They hit it, kicked it and threw it in the air. The other group didn't see this video. Then individual children were let into a room with some toys and particularly this Bobo doll to see if they would mimic the behaviour they had just seen on television. The group that had seen the footage were more likely to show aggressive tendencies towards the doll than those that had not seen the film. That was one of the first experiments, but research continued later on. Other researchers found that those children about 6 to 8 years old that watched a lot of violent television were more likely to be violent when they were in their teenage years. By observing these same participants into adulthood, researchers found that the ones who watched a lot of violent television when they were 8 years old were more likely to be arrested and prosecuted for crimes as an adult. Other concerns that researchers had was this idea of desensitisation. So someone might watch a violent film, then see violence on the news, but not be as concerned. People became so concerned that the government felt they needed to get involved. The Surgeon General Scientific Advisory Committee on Television and Social Behaviour conducted research in 1969. They were assessing the impact of violence on the attitude and behaviour of the viewers. They identified three major effects of seeing violence on television. Children may become less sensitive to the pain and suffering of others, in other words, desensitisation. Children may be more fearful of the world around them. This is similar to cultivation theory. Children may be more likely to behave in an aggressive or harmful way towards others. Similar to Bandura's Bobo Doll experiment, social learning theory. It's a similar story for computer games. If you click on the link, it will take you to a bit of research that PBS broadcast that was done by Ohio State University. The report argues very strongly that computer games have an obvious effect. They're using language such as clearly shows and we know. Unfortunately, it shows how much polarisation there is in this debate. And you'll see the other side of the arguments and the criticisms of this research in the next episode. So apart from that research, is there any other evidence that violent media makes us violent? Violent films and computer games have always had a bad press, and the mass media are quick to react when any incidents might happen, particularly any incident that might involve teenagers or youngsters. Just recently we had a case where a schoolboy stabbed a teacher at Corpus Christi College. The next day the Daily Mail published this report. They suggest that this violent act was a result of watching violence or playing violent video games. As they state the boy who played online video games Dark Souls and Grand Theft Auto. The paper doesn't actually blame these video games in this case, but the very fact that they put them in the headline says that the reporters are trying to suggest some sort of link. The American media isn't this subtle. They're far more accusatory when it comes to linking violent computer games to violence in real life. Deputies say an eight-year-old boy meant to shoot and kill his 90-year-old caregiver, Maurice Smothers. Accidentally shot 90-year-old Maurice Smothers while playing with a gun. But officials later found out the boy had been playing the video game Grand Theft Auto just before killing Smothers while she sat in the living room watching TV that Adam Lanza, the guy who was the shooter and the killer in the Sandy Hook massacre, had, quote, a trove of violent video games and would actually black out his game room so the only reality in the room was his TV screen. Lanza saw his victims as merely characters in a video game. Hear me clearly. 
Today on Katie, what are your kids playing? The longest he ever played was for 72 hours, three straight days. Parents who had no idea what a video game would do to their son. It is such a chilling and unbelievable story. He said, close your eyes, I have a surprise for you. I had been shot in the head. The exclusive jailhouse interview with the so-called Halo Killer. Do you remember that look on her face? I do. Your son had killed your wife and his mom. How do you wrap your head around that? There are too many video games that celebrate the mass killing of innocent people. Games that, despite attempts at industry self-regulation, find their way into the hands of children. These types of news report and headlines are very common, and many people feel that these real-life incidents back up the research. Research which suggests that watching violent media makes us violent. Next session we're looking at the other side of the argument and the criticisms to this research. Click on the link to find out more.